Hi guys, it's Michael Goh here from astrophotobear.com. Today I want to go through some of my techniques regarding panoramas in terms of how I do some of the imaging, how I stitch it together and also post-processing of the image. So starting off then, this is a panorama image I took at the at the Pinnacles in Western Australia. I always shoot with a little bit more at the at the end of the panorama to allow for the stretching that happens with the panorama stitching. Just clicking through the images, I was moving at about 15 degrees increments for the panorama. I found that this was more of uh, an artifact, I suppose, of how I used to shoot because when I was shooting with a, a, a Tekina 11 to 16. Uh, lens on my full frame camera. There was a lot of distortion and a lot of coma that's happening around the side, so it certainly helped with the stitching process. I, I'll actually go through at a late, in, at a future date, and just do set, test the panorama stitching using just a 30 degree angle increments. see a plane that was flying across the scene there. Now I've reached the end, I'm moving up to the top layer. You can see I've left an amount of space at the, uh, above the Milky Way core there. That's typically the amount of space I leave for most of my panorama images. That allows uh, for enough space for stitching and making sure that the uh, the core is is not compromised. And then back again. So going back into the full screen, just going selecting one of the images here. I'm just going to go into the develop module and reset to make sure everything is is just as it came out of the camera. So initially in Lightroom I'll do some pre-processing of the image. I'll do a little bit of noise control and I'll also enable the profile corrections for the lens. In terms of the sharpening, Lightroom always puts in a, a default amount of uh, sharpening to begin with. I actually remove this just as an illustration, just going into the center here. This is uh, at the 25 sharpening that comes up with as a default. If you increase it to the maximum, you can actually see that it sharpens all of the noise. Sharpening is one of the last things I want to do to the image, so I'll actually reduce that to nothing. And then I'll just put in a little bit of luminance noise reduction as well. The reason why I do a little bit of noise control initially is because when it goes into the panorama stitching process, the, the images will become a little bit stretched here and there. And because it stretches, it effectively stretches out the noise as well. Just something else as well regarding this image. I've actually shot this image at ISO 6400, 15 millimeters, f2.8 and 30 seconds. Now, according to say, if you if you applied the rule of 500, that would be about 33.3 seconds for this sort of settings on a full frame. The, uh, I did a previous image at the same location just a little bit beforehand uh, using 25 seconds, and that actually reduced a little bit of the star trailing. What happens is that even though it matches the, the effective rule or guide of 500, what happens is that it depends on how large you want to blow up your image because there'll always be some form of trailing unless you're, you're uh, using a tracking mount. I've gone for 30 seconds because I wanted to expose more for the foreground to actually bring out more of the light in the foreground so I've gone for the 30 seconds in this instance. Then going to the uh, enabling the profile corrections. Again, what happens is it removes a bit of the vignetting, also removes the, some distortion. Just before going into the panorama stitching process, I want it to be as clean as possible. And then after this, I'll synchronize the images and export it as a TIFF. 
in, uh, to process into PT GUI Pro. So having loaded the images into PT GUI, just quickly aligning the images. Okay, initially it's come up with a panorama like this. I'm not really happy with that shape, it just looks a little bit distorted. The, uh, there's a lot of distortion up at the very top there, the Milky Way looks a little bit too regular. You can see my car there. A few other things you can do with the panorama is you can actually just turn it around, which I'm not going to do. You can actually just pick it up and shift it if it doesn't feel balanced in a particular way. But in the scheme of things, the uh, the software has actually done a fairly decent job of stitching in this instance. You can see how the panorama has been stitched together in terms of what images compose it. You can actually shift the images around individually at this point of time as well. You can actually just shift particular frames around which and see how it stitches, which Obviously that doesn't work very well. Now showing some of the benefits of PT GUI Pro as well is around masking. Just see if you can actually see down here. This is just a, a preview. You can actually see there's a group of photographers over there with their little red lights. Going into the masking, you can actually see them in frame 7. So if we zoom in a bit, so if we zoom it in, we can see there's some red lights over there. But they're not showing up in image number 8 but they are in image number 6. Going into image 8, we can actually say, let's eliminate them. So you can see them in the preview screen. Just paint over to make sure that the area that we don't want, I mean that we is clear of the photographers, gets painted in green. You can see now they're gone. I want to show you something else regarding PT GUI as well, just looking at the different sorts of panorama types. You can see how all the images are used in, to create the panorama. A lot of people when they think panorama think in terms of an equirectangular, which is basically with all the images stacked up in a regular format. And while that's actually how the images are perhaps best taken, is that I don't really like uh, on how it presents in, in terms of the sky. Just showing a few other different effects. This one could be an interesting effect as well, to have a completely flat Milky Way in the sky. Okay, so now I'm fairly happy with the stitch. I'm just going to create panorama, make sure it's into PSD format, setting 16-bit, no compression. I want it flattened, because if you create layers, it's going to be a massive file. Just as a blended panorama, say create panorama. Okay, opening it up in Photoshop, you can see what the stitch has come out as. Making sure to do a, another eyeball check. Just to find out any of your serious errors before uh, going up, uh, before proceeding. Cool. 
core looks quite reasonable. Okay, this will be continued in a future video.